Good evening, Singapore, and to all our viewers across the globe. Greetings to you, our friends, partners, and supporters. Hope you are keeping safe and keeping well. Welcome to Bayanihan Talks webinar series. I am Minerva Lau, the Honorary Treasurer of the Philippine Bayanihan Society Singapore and moderator for tonight. Join me as we discuss and learn how to do business regarding free range chicken farming with Dr. Erwin Joseph Cruz, a veterinarian, a Philipp Philippine poultry free range specialist, and a fellow at the Philippine College of Poultry Practitioners. Before we proceed, please allow me to introduce our Bayanihan Society here and give you a glimpse of who we are and what we do. On behalf of the Board of the Philippine Bainihan Society in Singapore, I welcome you to the Bainihan Centre. The Bainihan Centre has opened its doors to support the educational, social and cultural needs of Filipinos and others in Singapore. Thanks to the strong partnership between the Government of the Philippines and Singapore and the initiative of our founding President, Ms. Jenny Chua and Vice President, Mr. Ning de Guzman. Since its establishment in 2001, more than 13,500 people have undergone skills training at the Bainihan Centre. But the Bainihan Centre is located at 43 Pasir Panjang Road. It provides classrooms, facilities and support for volunteers and community groups to conduct various short-term courses including basic and advanced computer training, nursing aid, hotel and restaurant management, dressmaking, caregiving, cooking, and baking and cosmetology. To foster the socio-cultural ties between Filipinos and Singaporeans, we also organize the Bainihan Walk. It is an annual event to bring together people from all across sectors of Singapore in a fun walkathon to promote integration of Filipinos with the Singaporean community. Tarana Mak Bainihan Centerna. I hope everyone now has a better understanding of what the PBSS is and what it does. Please do approach us for any training or skill ideas or cultural activity suggestions. Contact our Bayanihan Center officers, Cecil and Mindy, for any inquiry. Tonight, we have a special guest moderator who will be introducing our guest speaker, Dr. Bernard Basic, who is a veterinarian and auditor. An auditor of the Philippine Veterinary Medical Association. He graduated from the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, with a degree of Doctor of Veterinary Medicine in 1997. He passed the veterinary licensure examination at the same year. He also held various positions in the Philippines before moving to Singapore in 2006. He was founding vice president of Veterinario Singapore in 2010 and eventually became the president in 2013. He was also the vice president of the Singapore of Laboratory Animal Science in 2015 before moving back to the Philippines in 2017. He is now the auditor of the Umbrella Organization of Filipino Veterinarians and the Accredited Professional Organization or APO of PRC, the Philippine Veterinary Medical Association. So may I now call Dr. Bernard Basic. Please go ahead, Dr. Basic. Okay, thank you, Mamini. Uh, good evening to uh, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's uh, it's nice to be back <laughs> in Singapore. It's been a while, and I'm happy to see everybody again, uh, especially um, our friends in uh, the Bayanihan Center. Okay, so I'm sure everybody would like to hear from our speaker. But before I, I uh, we start, okay, or I introduce him, uh, I'd like to give uh, some of the his profile. Um, he's also a fellow alumni from the College of Veterinary Medicine, uh, UP Los Banos. He graduated in 1991. 
is a founding member of the Philippine College of Poultry Practitioners. Mind you, this is a group of poultry consultants, the best uh, poultry consultants um, in the Philippines. So I'm very excited to bring uh, our speaker tonight. Uh, so everybody in Singapore uh, will learn only from the best, okay? And then he established the program for breeding and free range chicken production meat type, okay? So parang broiler po, under Philippine conditions in 2004 para po sa ating mga farmer stakeholders. He founded the Philippine Association of Free Range Poultry Advocates Incorporated. And then in 2015 to 2016, he became president of that uh, professional group, the Philippine College of Poultry Practitioners. Uh, one good thing about uh, Dr. Irwin, he is also a consultant for poultry production uh, of the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Fisheries, and uh, Bureau, Bureau of Ag Agricultural and Fisheries Standards. Okay, and uh, he's also a uh, Ah, okay, Chairman for Free Range Poultry Production, Philippine National Standards, okay? And he's also a lecturer, okay, of the Technology Resource Center for Free Range Chicken and Peking Duck. So you're in good hands, Po. Uh, and I hope you ask uh, a lot from him. He's multi-awarded, okay? In 2011, he was uh, the Outstanding Veterinarian in Agribusiness. Okay, awarded by the Philippine Veterinary Medical Association. And on the same year, he was the most outstanding poultry practitioner okay, by the Veterinary Practitioners Association of the Philippines, or VPAP. And just recently, po, okay, uh, he won a first prize okay, in the design contest for uh, small-scale poultry farming in Asia. And this award was given by the Federation of Asian Veterinary Association or fava, okay. So, uh, uh, so to uh, to start, okay, I'd like to introduce. Uh, please welcome Dr. Erwin Joseph Cruz. Okay, take it away, Doc. Thank you, Dr. Bernard. Basic. Thank you very much for inviting me and uh, Philippine Biennial Society of uh, Singapore. It's an honor to be invited here. An opportunity that uh, aligns with our. Uh, um, objectives of helping and reaching out to our uh, kababayan sa mga bayani natin na nasa labas na hanggang ngayon ay uh, kung wala po kayo ay eh, our uh, our economy our Filipina economy might be affected already so it is an honor and I salute all of you thank you po so thank you for this opportunity and I would like to present to you now uh, an introduction on uh, free range poultry uh, in the Philippines. No? I have been in this program since 1997 and I was the uh, first Philippine veterinarian to, to go into this program. So, And one of my main objectives is to help Filipino farmers and mga kababayan nating CPRs or FWs to have a business here because uh, that is very critical when you are outside. Okay. The relevance of Philippine uh, free range poultry, uh, the new normal in a small holder poultry farming. So, what can we do at this time of new normal? And uh, you will see later on that it is quite uh, positive or uh, quite uh, progressive right now when you go to uh, this kind of sector in the Philippines. I always start with my presentation that an educated farmer is a successful farmer. I see the value of education that exceeds beyond just having a farm, having a lot. It is the right education and getting it from the right sources. Because uh, right now in this media, in this age of uh, multimedia and social media, it is important to get your knowledge from the right specialists, right people, especially veterinarians who are willing to help and reach out also to you. And I would like to thank, personally thank po ang at, uh, all our uh, frontliners, no? all of you, uh, your, uh, with especially our, uh, our, our uh, kababayans abroad who have been uh, quietly uh, contributing their, uh, their uh, expertise, knowledge, experience towards a better uh, uh, 
world, no? Because of the new normal, and of course, uh, here in the Philippines, no? Your all all contributions. Thank you very much. Also, salamat po sa ating mga farmers or backliners. We call them backliners. Why? Because they supply our food here in the Philippines, no? Here in our country, so they are very important that we also uh, support them and thank them for continually giving local produce because we are really focusing on produce local, consume local programs for you in your provinces. A walkthrough of this presentation. What is free-range poultry farming? What is considered a smallholder poultry farming? Before we call them backyard poultry raisers, but uh, let us put more uh, dignity by creating the smallholder poultry farmers as uh, the proper uh, name for these uh, backyard poultry raisers. History on smallholder chicken production in the Philippines and how it evolved to the, in the 21st century. In my seminars, I usually include uh, a little bit of history and uh, it is very important to know where we came from and where we are going. Okay, our identity is embedded in that, so it's very important. Present population based in Philippine Statistics Authority of the medium scale uh, to small to medium scale poultry farmers in the Philippines and its significance, no? This statistics. Uh, strengths and opportunities of backyard poultry, weaknesses and threats, value of good education and genetics in free range poultry farming. And then we have our conclusion. What is free range poultry farming? As per the Philippine National Standards of the Department of Agriculture, it is uh, as defined as a, a system of production that raises chickens in a confined environment while uh, allowing the birds to exhibit their natural behavior and allowing them to access forage and grasses, insects, and sunlight. Free range poultry production uh, may be further as classified into pasture raised. So uh, chickens are uh, placed in an area, you no, know, and then uh, they are moved by a fixed mobile house uh, within uh, every two to three days to a new location. So uh, nakakulong po, and then they are kept indoors. A method, while the traditional free range is a method production that exceeds the maximum requirements like uh, harvest age or free range, there are standards and I will show you later. Basic standards no, of uh, Philippine uh, production method of farming. No? Free range chicken production is a method of farming. It is not uh, uh, a label or a noun that we can use, but rather it is a method of farming. So it is very important that we know this. Same with uh, organic chicken, as some uh, farmers claim, organic chicken is the process or the method of farming that you are doing. Uh, the chicken is basically the genetics is the one that uh, differentiates from each other as you uh, farm. The chickens have access to a fence-in area to allow the birds to roam. Minimum ranging requirement is one bird per square meter of open space. What does that mean? Example, you have uh, uh, 50 square meters of open space that you want to use for ranging. You will use, uh, you can utilize 50 birds. Uh, 50 birds, 50 square meters. So one is to one, you know? Yan po yung ranging area lang. That is only the ranging area. The housing is not included. Access to vegetation and insects that are added feed inputs to the birds. These uh, feed inputs are free that they get from the area, but they cannot be the source, main source of feeds because they have to grow, they have to produce eggs, they have to grow their body to become a meat type or inasal types. So very important that they need the supplementation and the feeding program to make them grow properly. At least six to eight hours of open air and sunlight. So this is a requirement if you are doing a free range poultry production that they have an access to open air and sunlight versus the intensive uh, chicken housing that you see that they are just kept uh, in the cages until harvest time. 
The birds must be provided a shaded dry area with a space requirement of about uh, uh, five to six birds per square meter, indoor stocking density. So that is a requirement sa, sa housing, sa kulungan, that for every square meter inside the kulungan, you have five to six birds ng uh, population. So if you have 10 square meters of housing, indoor housing, you can put 50 to 60 birds there. But they are also allowed to go out with a minimum ranging area requirement of one bird per square meter. So you have an indoor space and an outdoor space. The genetics used are the traditional slow growing color chickens or the native chickens or the hybrids, which has commercial names. Commercial names po ito like Sasso, Hubbard Grimo. So these are names of companies. They are not names of chickens, number one. So very important that we know them. These are for commercial production of uh, free range chicken. So it requires a volume of production so that it will be more profitable. No? For egg, we have dominant CZ or ZZ that came from Czech Republic. They call brown, HNN brown. These are egg layers. In contrast with Singapore, they are more familiar with uh, brown eggers, right? So they uh, utilize brown eggers in, in Singapore as compared to the Philippines, we use white egg uh, uh, chickens, white produ egg producing chickens. So there is a difference. For dual or meat type and eggs, you can use dominant CZ, where the males are used for meat while the females are used for egg production. Basic standards of free range poultry, it is a method of farming. No? I, I repeat that because you know we don't want you to be misinformed. Provided with a combination of commercial feeds. So you, you utilize clean commercial feeds, about 80 to 90% of their, uh, their requirement is commercial feed. So there are good quality feeds here in the Philippines that you can rely on to provide you the, the performance based on the nutrition that we provide them. Legumes and grasses and other supplements in the locality. So if you have areas that are high outputs of uh, vegetables, you can use that as your uh, supplement. High production of corn, high production of coconuts. You know, th these areas or localities are uh, main sources of supplementary feeds for the chickens. Access to perching or roosting sticks. If you will recall in the provinces at nighttime, you find the native chickens to be roosting on top of trees or inside in the tree branches, on the tree branches, because that is their natural behavior. Uh, we always encourage them to do their natural behavior because it is less stress for them. Less stress means less possible uh, sources of diseases or sickness to come in. Access to dust bath. This is a natural behavior of a chicken that they access dust baths to, so that they will have a more relaxing feeling. It's like they're uh, scratching their skin when they go into a dust bath. Free range chickens are aged and harvested on a minimum of 56 days. So there's a process of slow growing, not fast growing because the taste will be different and uh, it will develop uh, their body to be more uh, tasty and uh, fiber to be a bit, uh, just a bit uh, less, less soft as compared to the 28-day-old uh, chickens. It's a recognized poultry farming practice in the European Union, USA, and Australia. So the advances in Europe and America has seen that the, the essence of uh, having fierce chicken production is also a value adding way of uh, far, for farmers to earn properly. So basically the objective is to get value added produce by having this skill, this genetics and knowledge of farming so that you can earn better as a farmer when you are farming here in the provinces. What is uh, smallholder poultry farming? Family-based poultry production as a food source of poultry produce or food on the table. That is one of the essence of uh, setting up a small chicken farm in your backyard. 
it is actually converting surplus crops to animal protein. Once you have a, a, a surplus harvest of uh, maize, palay, uh, vegetables, fruits, you can use them as supplementary uh, feeds and convert them to a high value animal protein. A local farmer's poultry production based on local or provincial market. You are more focused on producing chickens for your family first and then to your uh, extended families and in your circle and then in the community. So we are putting back the local farming to the lo local people in the area so that you will have your own small poultry business that is based on good production and uh, very, uh, very uh, cost-effective way of uh, producing eggs and meat. Local farmers keeping chickens as a support source or in-between crop source of food. Sometimes our farmers uh, have a problem once they have uh, exhausted their finances and they are waiting for their crops to uh, mature like 90 days in, with our palay or our, our, our corn. We have no food. We have no food in our, on our table of the family. So these are very essential so that in between crop source, you have a source of food rather than uutang sa tindahan. So, lucky me, yung mga ganyan. Yung bang mga processed food, you have good food on the table for your family, especially the children. Focus is on the provincial chicken consumers. So, this is the target market that you will have. That the market that you are going around are also the people you go around with when you grow up or in the provinces, in the localities where you stay. Composed of inbreds or mixed breed varieties. This is the old system. That, that is why there are, you can never see farming, uh, smallholder poultry farming to be elevating to an agribusiness because we are using inbred and mixed breed varieties or what I call OGK. What does OGK mean? Only God knows what kind of genetic program or genetic productivity the chicken will have. So very important that we are traceable or we have the traceability to know the productivity of our animals. Kasi once we have an unknown productivity, we will be wasting time buying feeds, buying inputs without no little or less production. Level of knowledge on modern poultry technology and production is low to medium. Significantly based more on anecdotal. Ano ibig sabihin na anecdotal? These are... Uh, uh, stories passed on by our uh, forefathers, our parents, our lolos, our lolas, that this is the better way to grow chicken, etc. No? Or sometimes we get anecdotals from uh, social media, which has no scientific basis. So we are trying to encourage our, our, our kababayans abroad that they encourage their, their uh, loved ones here in the Philippines to have a more science-based program rather than parang hot pandisal system tayo or sari-sari store system that you know uh, everybody has sari-sari store pandisal I, 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 I usually uh, pass through going to my farm an area where there are lots of uh, resettlements and every three five meters away there is a sari-sari store in one street imagine out of the 40 uh, residents in that street there are already 20 to 30 sari-sari stores along the way. We need to elevate the skill. We need to create educated agribusiness, agri-entrepreneurs from our uh, kababayans here. Uh, the pag-iiwanan natin ng funds. So they, they need to learn more in the program so that they will be successful. And a successful family, once you are a happy family, once you are abroad, you know, you, automatic you're happy because you see the development and yung no more worries of finances no minimal worries of finances ah uh, minimal agri entrepreneurial ability eto ah naka note na rito na ginawa ko funded mostly by our seafarers and OFWs so rather than spending money on tricycles sari sari store or 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 things that you know uh, uh kumbaga it's not a long term program why don't you use agri-entrepreneurship in farming, in, in, in poultry, in quail, in duck, so that there is first food on the table and then second business 
for you when you come back. The genetic foundations are low in, in poultry farming with our smallholders. That means low productivity. Once you have a low producing animal, you have a high cost to produce. So once you have a high cost to produce, you're losing as you grow. So that is the, the reverse way of you know, having a successful farming. Favorite project of local government leaders during election time, as you know, you know, uh, the election fever is, try, is starting to rise up now uh, in 2021. And, you know, as I can see the demands from the provinces and from the cities and municipalities, free-range chicken production is one of their dispersal projects. So if you are a supplier in the area, you have opportunities to earn. And, and this is one, one uh, jackpot that you can get once you have done successfully maintaining a program in your locality. Population of free range can be from 10 to 3,000 heads capacity. It depends on definition. So I'm really encouraging our government, our DA, to set standards more further on backyard poultry production. Because what, what happened after the lockdown is very important to see the value of backyard poultry producers because they are the ones after having a lockdown, is the ones supplying chicken, pork, no, quail, tilapia in their own locality. It is not the tawid dagat. It is not the the transport from Manila that is feeding the the population, but rather the local farmers. So I hope, and I am encouraging the Department of Agriculture to look into this as a standard program for for smallholder farmers. Once you see the definitions of HLURB or Housing and Land Use Regulatory Board, they have set some standards. This is based on uh, 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 together with the DNR that there should be a resolution which is R674 series of 2000 that there should be defined volume of uh, backyard, small and medium scale to large scale farming. So Dito, what we can see is that the maximum capacity is around 500 to 5,000 or 10 to 5,000 heads. Uh, doesn't require ECC or uh, environmental uh, certificates, no? uh, clearances to grow in the area. So these things are what we can maximize. Ang uh, problem lang po is that be sure that your area where you won't have complaints with your kapitbahay especially if you're in a subdivision. So you have to look for an agricultural area to do these farming methods, not in your backyard sa subdivisions, no? townhouses, etc. Uh, that is against the zoning rules. Short history of the evolution of poultry production in the Philippines. So as I've said, we have to learn something to gain something. As what George Santayana said, those who cannot learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And we have seen it over and over again with uh, politics, with governments, that we have to learn from our past to move forward to the, towards the future. The Manila Galleon in Acapulco trade is the system that was done during the colonial times. So, ibang klase pala mag-lecture si Dr. Erwin, meron pang history. Opo, kailangan po natin malaman to kung bakit yung mga native natin ngayon, why our natives are look like that, why is it very important, even fighting cock production, no? fighting cock uh, farming, no? how is it relevant? If you can see before motor motorized uh, uh, boats no? or ships, it passes through the trade winds, pass stops over at Guam, and goes to Manila or Cebu, and then go back to Acapulco, where the main uh, 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 head of uh, the government, Spanish colonial government, is coming from. And when you see on a bigger picture, the stocks are coming from Europe, from Spain. One point to note is that after the Spanish colonization, even the genetics of chickens, pork, uh, uh, cattle also came from Europe. But eventually, they inbred, that's why they became small. So that is one reason. Intensive inbreeding will stunt the growth development of the animal. 
And during this program, if you will see the Talipapa in Manila in 1857, this is an illustration uh, seen illustrated in London in 1857 actually, you can see two significant, uh, two significant animals, no? Uh, the fighting cock used for sabong and then the chicken uh, native or uh, farming chicken that is used for uh, food. And of course, the pork uh, uh, pig production was also relevant at that time. Most famous Filipino who enjoys poultry farming in the colonial times. So meron pong mga sikat na, na mga Pilipinos na talagang mahiling mag-poultry farming din. At ako po ay uh, uh, very proud to say that our main national hero, which is Dr. Jose Rizal, is a poultry uh, aficionado or practitioner. So may poultry farm po yan. Paano nyo nalaman, Dok? Wala naman kayo nung time na yun. Basically, pagka nakita nyo po, this is the replica in the Pitan where he stayed in 1892 to 1896. This is the replica of the housing of his poultry house. So this is where he keeps his chickens because uh, Rizal, as per history, loves adobo and tinola. So every time he has his VIPs coming in, visiting him, the, the, the church, the priest, and the generals or the Spanish, Spanish military officers, they, he serves them with tinola and adobo. So that's his uh, favorite bayan or ulam, no? See? That is the replica of the... Uh, when you go to the Pitan, that is what you will see. Part of his uh, house in, in uh, the Pitan. Present-day scenario of the pol Philippine poultry industry. Did you know that the native and improved native occupies 45% of the total population of chicken in the Philippines. So every year, the PSA sets an inventory and they estimate that 45% of the whole population of chickens in the Philippines are coming from improved native or native. Because this, if you are from Visayas, Mindanao, Northern Luzon, Southern Luzon, the most popular food to eat is yung native tinola, no, inasal, na native, and we prefer this over the processed chicken. So that is why it is a high inventory in the provinces, 45% approximately. And as per PSA, uh, Philippine Livestock, no? Go, uh, .gov .ph, uh, ang nakikita nila is that uh, the volume of chicken that was uh, inventory was 56.39 million. And the and, uh, Improved native chicken is 83.38 million. How come, Doc, how, how, how come there are a lot of native, improved native in the provinces? Because this is the main source of poultry produce in the provinces, actually. And when you see the open stat, the updated statistics of PSA, it is about 80 million as per uh, 2020, October, and uh, 2019, sorry, October. So it's 80 million already. The volume is very high. And it has been improving as we go. As of today, there's around 11% improvement from the increase of improved native as previous, uh, previous production from the previous years. And if you see, it's 45.28%. It's coming from uh, improved native, free range, small, uh, farmed by small and medium scale farmers and fighting cocks. These are the main sources. While the 54% is coming from big integrators, medium to large scale independent breeder companies. So nakikita, bakit ko pinakikita to? So that you will know that there is a potential for business in, in, in terms of uh, having a small scale farming in your locality. So there is a big potential because there is a big consumption. And looking further, no? Kita natin dito. We can see that uh, there is a very big uh, requirement as per inventory of improved native. Ang laki po, it's 80 million. No? And these are the top notchers. Uh, what you will see here. no? So uh, Ilocos region, Cagayan Valley, Central Luzon, 
Mimaropa, Bicol Region, Western Visayas, Central Visayas, Zamboanga Peninsula, Northern Mindanao, Davao Region. So there is a very significant increase. They take a share of about 5.5% uh, pataas ng 80 million. So the consumptions are basically there. So, sorry, Jen, sorry. So the consumptions are basically there. The top notcher is Western Visayas, and then uh, Central Visayas, then Northern Mindanao. So that is how high the demand for this kind of chickens will be once you set up a farming. Smallholder production plays an important role in the rural areas. This is the main source of poultry, uh, conclusive, that it is in the rural areas, these are the ones they look. Definitely, wala naman ng groceries at supermarket doon sa bundok. So they look for the poultry source as the ones that are improved native or native. It is integral part in Philippine farming, rice farmers, corn farmers, coconut farmers, rubber plantations, etc. It's an in-between crop source of foods, funds, and food on the table. We have uh, heard a lot of stories how chicken is converted into money once you sell it in the market, local market, and then you get money, then you buy that for medicines. No, uh, You buy the medicines from those funds. An immediate source of animal protein in the provinces. Filipinos are now eating more chicken, especially eggs, No, more than pork, goat, fish, or beef. As we know, uh, African swine fever, ASF, has been affecting our, our uh, pork industry. So they are transferring now to chicken production. Remains as a special variant for Filipinos. Pagka mayroong tayong handaan, mayroong uh, inihaw na manok, lechon manok, uh, tinola, adobo, etc. Part of the Philippine food heritage and cuisine. Once you see food connoisseurs or historians, they always mention that any any uh, ce uh, celebrations during the time, the colonial, up to now, chicken is part of that uh, cuisine. Immediate livelihood and relief for calamities. No, During calamities, napaka-importante, mabilis pong set up, mabilis mag-produce. Uh, so this picture tells a lot during the Taal uh, eruption no? last year. This was around January. So it tells a lot that the farmers are uh, really relying on their poultry to have food on the table and some business, magbenta ng manok ng konte to have some money. So very important ang farming ng poultry sa mga Pilipino. Strengths and opportunities, no? Okay. Quickest animal livelihood to set up, it is operating and earning in three to four months time. Easy to learn with no religious or age barrier. Sa Mindanao po, sa Buanga, sa Cagayan, uh, uh, Barm region, uh, patok po yung gantong program. Supplemental source of food and support income for the families. Annual increase in the demand for local, provincial chicken and eggs are increasing. No, uh, Positive effects of OFW, so see, Seafarers, they are the sources of funds and farming and consumption of the smallholder produce. It is much better than Sari Sari store or tricycle as an OFW negocio. Local government units requirement of poultry livelihood programs due to the high election fever, high impact as a small package. So yan po yan, konting pondo, marami pong nakikinabang. A majority of backyard piggery farms have been converted to poultry egg and meat production due to ASF. And the new normal due to COVID, no, no cockfighting. So mabagal po ang development ng cockfighting. So ngayon po nagbukas na, it has opened slowly and mostly for online cockfighting na. So these things have limited the, 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 the uh, problem with the cockfighting uh, industry. A new normal due to COVID, provincial lockdowns have greatly affected uh, the new the normal supply chain of poultry produce in the provinces. Supply and demand affected talaga because once you have a lockdown, there's no movement of inputs and outputs. Growing your own food is the target. We have to grow our own food. And we've seen this during the lockdown. Money is secondary. So even if you have money, you cannot go out. So it's a good thing you still have food at home, plants, vegetables, and livestock, which is chicken, which is the smallest animal that we can use for food. Increase urbanization. Yan po yung problem natin. Ano? 
less agriculture opportunities. I, we have seen housing projects, industrialization, pero ngayon po it has slowed down a bit because of the situation of the COVID. However, this has been a threat to agriculture. Instant foods, no? people like to eat and go instant food. It doesn't mean that it is uh, nutritionally uh, good and balanced. No? Fast globalization, COVID threat, uh, avian influenza or AI, ND or Newcastle disease outbreaks, high feed costs. No? These are the problems that uh, you can encounter. Low productivity. This is due to excessive inbreeding and non-scientific approach in feeding vaccination, disease management, and biosecurity. Minimal science-based approach in farming. It is uh, social media influence. Rather than getting it from far, uh, veterinarian specialists, they get it from social media because they think it is free. Well, sometimes it is not correct. So a lot of times. No? Wrong approach in genetics. Hybridization is needed. So there's a process na pagka kinross mo yung dalawang chicken, they give you more, more eggs and more meat rather than inbreeding or pure line production. Genetics, its vital role in development of smallholder farming in the Philippines. No? One of the vital foundations that can determine the progress or regress of smallholder farming program, genetics po yan. Misrepresentation of the native chicken as a productive and sustainable farming for rural poultry farming. Hindi po pwedeng gawing project ng malakihan ang native chicken. I will show you why. The government program paiwi, no? yung magpa-farming uh, kayo, bibreed, ibibenta, itatransfer, dyan po nagkakasource ng problem sa sakit. Nag Inbreeding, the quality of chickens are degraded if eventually mag-shutdown yung paiwi. Because at F2, ibig sabihin yun ng uh, uh, second generation na naanak or third generation ng mga anak will not be as effective as the F1 or yung main anak ng certified breeders. Undesirable effects of inbreeding, uh, mahina ang katawan, abnormalities, defects, low, low productivity, stunting, small egg sizes, etc. Cost cutting versus wise invest, investing. Ito po nakikita ko sa ating mga local farmers. Sa ibang bansa po, pagka po ako sa seminar, they ask me what is the investment, how much, how do you get into the program. Pagka po mga local farmers ang kinakausap ko sa Philippines, Ang unang tanong, paano po i-shortcut yan? Paano po i-dayain yung program? Paano po makatipid? Which is the wrong mentality because an investment is an investment. You have to improve your program to earn more. Not to cost cut on feeds, tipirin, hindi po lalaki at hindi mga initlog. Multitasking progress of farmers has a low success rate. A farmer is a single tasker. We need to educate them to become multitaskers, not an automatic thing, no? The basic template of hybridization and poultry production must be followed. Meron po kasing parent stocks na ginagamit talaga. Same as the commercial, industrial, or integrators. Hindi po yan magbikukuha dun sa mga anak, gagawin breeder. There is a continuous source of certified parent stock to make it sustainable. Creating a specialized farming program per locality is very important. So ito will focus on smallholder farmers. Creating a breeding station, meron na pong raging source ng inyong F1 o no? yung anak na para paitlogen o pakarnihen. Hindi ho yung hinahalong kalamay ang mga genetics. No? So as you can see, a chicken, native chicken will only produce 30 to 50 eggs a year versus an imported hybrid which is 286 eggs a year. I am not against the native chicken. You know, We should keep that as our uh, heritage line or heirloom line. However, if you want production, you need a high-producing animal. So, yun po yung nire-recommend ko as a program, high-producing animals. As well as the weight, 1 kilo at about 60, uh, about 4 to 5 months, medyo matagal ho yun, mahirapan po mag-recover ang farmer. And small eggs. So, this is our company, uh, Dominance EZ, no? in, in Europe, coming from Europe. And we get we import the parent stocks and then we uh, distribute the F1 or yung anak ng parent stocks. They are producing more, 1.5 kilos in 70 days, a male, which we call inasal type, while the layer type is the female, produces 280 eggs a year, 
lasang native pa rin siya, still tender, more harvest, more production, more consistent. Versus native farming, which is has a low output, 1 kilo after 8 months, tapos 60 eggs a year. So comparatively, medyo mahihirapan kang maka-turn around as a business. What we import from the Czech Republic are parent stocks, and from these parent stocks, we can get the grow them uh, from day old, lumaki yan, maging breeders. Then we sell the F1s, you grow them, you can have a breeding station if you like, you can have a grow out station for chicken, uh, meat, or egg, kung yun po yung target yung market, you can have either of that. So you have a program or a menu of what production you can do with us assisting you to make your business grow in your locality. Okay? Educating farmers on a more scientific poultry farming can help local farmers earn more and improves food security of localities in the provinces. Okay? So ito po, example po, no? So, makikita po natin dito, low-tech. Low-tech po yung sistema, pero hybrid ang alaga. So, gagandahan lang po natin ng konti ang housing, improve natin konti. Mas marami kayong production. Tabing, tabing kali lang po yan. Pwede po mag-farming on a small uh, area of land. No? Half, half a hectare or one quarter of a hectare, pwede po yan. Okay? This is another one. They can, kung ano yung surplus sa area, na vegetables, you just boil them or ferment them, you can give them as supplementary. Makakasave kayo ng cost and yung waste nyo na convert nyo sa eggs or meat. As we, you can see, these are the parent stocks o yung magulang po nung nakita natin na mga uh, layers. No? They, they lay a lot of eggs. Makita nyo nakapila po sila sa pugad. They're just waiting. May mga waiting pa dyan. No? Yeah, mga waiting, no? Kita nyo, hindi na sila makatis, gusto nila mga itlog talaga. So the technology is matched to sa smallholder na hindi ganun kalaki ang pondo but has the uh, uh, potential of having a program of egg and meat sa kanilang locality. So every morning, nagaantay na yung inyong uh, customers sa gate. So you have fresh eggs. So they just go to your farm. They buy the eggs. You don't have to sell it in a store or in a very big mall na hindi yung ngayon na relevant. Ito ho, farm to home program. So you can have your own poultry farm in your own locality. So dominant ZZ or dominant Asia, what we call it in, uh, in Southeast Asia and the Pacific, we produce more eggs than the native, number one. We have a high output of eggs ranging them, of course, papakainin pa rin natin ng commercial feeds yan, but good quality. Okay? And then the males, you call that in a cell type, you sell them as a native chicken. So 70 days, 1.5 kilo live ho yan. And then you can sell them, yung ibang farmer sa Cebu, ibang farmer sa Bacolod, sa Leyte, sa Davao, uh, uh, Cotabato, no, kagayan de Oro, they sell them as inihaw. So you earn more. If your cost to produce is about 150 pesos per head uh, chicken, you dress it, lagay mo ng 175, ang cost total, pati dressing, or 180. Then you sell them as roasted chicken, you sell it at about 400 pesos, 350 to 400. So hindi na masama ang kita. And then you can also use it for tinola, uh, home cooking, etc. They also give it uh, flowers, no? A supplementary feeding, no? May edible flowers. You use uh, moringa, and ba tawag sa Tagalog niyan? Malunggay. Uh, you can use surplus crops in your area, Madre de Agua, etc. So you have alternatives that you can do farming and enjoying it at the same time. So dual type chickens for maximum productivity and sustainability in small to medium scale poultry farming. So the objective is the male, you use it for meat, while the female you use for egg production. So that walang tapon, walang tapon doon sa program ninyo. Okay? Conclusions, no? Smallholder poultry farming is part and parcel of Filipino farming, a tradition that is hundreds of years old. So mga ninuno natin, pagka may piyesta, may graduation, maraming 
maraming pinapatumbang mga manok yan, di ba? So, yan po yung iniihaw. Hindi ho bakat pinapatumba manok. Provincial chicken, meat, and eggs are important in regions of our Filipino cuisine. 45% of the poultry production in the Philippines is still from this farming of smallholder farmers of improved native and native chicken production. The other side, the poultry industry that has a growth for potential, growth potential, and also a space for small farmers like us with minimum uh, capitalization and land. No? A smallholder farmer, if educated in the proper way of growing chickens, organized well tayo, and equipped with the right genetics can be a formidable force in helping food security in the rural areas. So we have our, uh, our uh, Facebook uh, our Facebook page, Dominant Asia Pacific. So ito po yung tsura niyang Facebook page namin. And then you can learn more. We have learning modules. We have trainings. You can inquire from them. And how to get your parent stocks or your F1. Meron po mga uh, uh, breeding stations area which are independent. They learn from these modules that we give and they set up this program. And then we share the market to them. So if you are, for example, Taga Samar, you can get from the certified, may mga certified breeding stations area. Okay. Poultry uh, farming, no? So you have breeder stations for poultry in the areas that are dominant CZ certified. Okay. Oh, we have Poltoribio in Singapore, Lester Olpindo from Singapore. Uh, and then we have uh, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, marami na po. Okay. So our, our products are also coming from Europe. So you are rest assured that it is quality certified by the European Union. Thank you very much for your attention and God bless to everyone. I'm, it's really an honor and opportunity to help our Kababayans in this program. Thank you very much, Po. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Irwin. Uh, alam niyo, Dr. Irwin, ang dami na ditong naglalagay sa chat box. I think, uh, ano gagawin ko? Parang ano ah, uh, I'll make it parang real talk, uh, Dr. Irwin. Like for example, yes, okay. I'm an OFW. Number one, uh, I don't know anything. Okay? Wala akong kaalam-alam dyan. Uh, and then, how do I start? Like how much money do I need uh, to set aside? Diba? And... Uh, Yun, basically, like, kunyari, step by step, I know they will get in touch with you, but I'm sure some of here would like, uh, medyo racing na yung, ano nila, yung mind nila. How do I start? How much money do I need? Uh, you talk about one meter per bird, uh, a space. Uh, how do I start? I saw the picture. May, uh, you have like a net to, uh, how would you call that? Fence the bird and then let the bird you know, stay outside compared to broilers who are actually inside the 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 hen, uh, the houses all the time. Go ahead, Dr. Erwin, sorry. Yes, thank you, uh, Dr. Bernard. Uh, you can start with the uh, with uh, 20,000 pesos. You start small lang po. I always tell our kababayans, you don't have to be jumping to become big kagad kasi in spite of the learning program, learning process, there is the learning curve. So everybody goes through that. Kahit na uh, I guide you along the way, you go through that learning curve and you have to learn. The essence of the module is be to become critical thinkers in learning about farming. Hindi po lahat ng farming is about getting it from the books or getting it from uh, from lectures. No? It is opening your mind to be critical thinkers. Now, we know and understand that if we do this kind of, tipirin mo ng feeds yan, imposibleng lumaki. That's number one, no? Tipirin mo ng genetics yan. Huwag ka mag sa genetics. Imposibleng mag-unlad ang iyong poultry farming. So, you have to learn that. And how do you go through that? So, if you have 20,000 as a startup, number one, you can uh, message us in our Facebook page, Dominant Asia Pacific. You Like nyo muna. Like nyo muna yung page na yon, And then, inquire po kayo. How do I get... I'm, uh, kunyari, I'm Erwin Joseph Cruz. I'm from this place. I would like to inquire about how to get layer layer types from you or in a salt type pang, pang karne, how do I start? So we will give you some formats how to go about it. 
learning okay. is the ninety percent of the program. Important ang learning natin. Ang ten percent is the execution that you will do. I have taught about three years ago. I was there in Singapore. I did some seminars on the program, and those farmers who started it, they went through the program, learning curve, etc. And then that is the time that you accelerate it once you have gotten through the common daily things. No, so kailan masanay mo na tayo ron. So twenty thousand, you can start. You can start at twenty thousand pesos. Yung po. Okay. From your experience, Doc Irwin, those who started it, you know, when the last time you were in Singapore, how long did it take them? Po, bago sila they got used to it and then they said, "I'm, I love this, ano, this business." Um, from your experience, po, ano yung feedback nyo, Doc Irwin? Well, if you're equipped with the right knowledge and the roadmap, how to do it with the modules that we provide, on the second run, mo, you know everything already because. The other thing that I forgot to to mention is the market. No, the market is the one you will be setting in the area. For example, you started to grow 100 heads of layers. You will get approximately once it's producing around two trays a day, two to three days a day a day. So the three two to three trays na yon. dapat ready ka ng imarket yon. Pag start palang maggrow mo ng CCO na layer type, kailangan nagready ka na magpromote dun sa area mo magpa-reserve ka na, etc. So once that's coming already, you will feel the market demand in the area. And that is where you will do your placement if you want to increase it or uh, try to do a second run, etc. But the farmers who did it usually expect there are some mistakes on the first try. But on the second try, as long as you learn properly, you will get it. And then you will know the journey or the roadmap that you will go to in your okay. local. Yeah, thank you, Doctor Irwin. Doctor Irwin, one of the ano kasi when I was in Singapore, alam naman natin our kababayan in Singapore, you know, income is stable, and of course, there's always a longing to go back to the Philippines. Yeah. Now, in 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 one of the plans that I had before, and some of my friends when I was in Singapore is, sana I could do something in Philippines, to one to help my family, help relatives, and at the same time. Uh, start that business so by the time I come back it's already there no it's kind of uh, like uh, what do you call that a safety net mamini parang ganun ba now when I when I go back to the Philippines I have something going on already di ba? parang yeah. you know I didn't lose any income what would you how do you think we could do that uh, Doc Irwin yeah I, 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 marami pong uh, mga returnees na they started the program about let's say about uh, out of 10, we have four, four OFW seafarers who really engage in the program. They grew from a, from a 50 breeder farm to 150 to 200. So the demand farm, is wow. ever increasing. So once you go start it up, habang wala kayo, you learn all the idiosyncrasies, the quirks of the program, yung mga do's and don'ts. By the time magbalik nyo, you are ready. You are very ready. Kasi we have farmers who have small farms lang, but they earn a lot. Why? Kasi sa unang ikot pa lang ng 20,000 mo, basta inayos mo, balik 28,000 yan eh, balik puhunan mo. Tsaka, basta tama ang... Because alam nyo, maingat po ako. Ako yung mga speaker na hindi ako makatulog pagka mag-sales talk ako. Ayoko ng sales talk. Gusto ko straightforward by experience, by uh, validations of other farmers. Na... I can really vouch that if you do this properly, your money will be growing. But kasama po yung trabaho, knowledge, hindi po pwedeng remote control. So I, I'm giving you the facts kasi I'm so excited presenting this program to our OFWs because the opportunity is very big in the Philippines. Because Philippines will be an agricultural-based country and it is a very important backbone of the economy. So bukod sa ating mga kababayan sa labas, agrikultura nagpapaikot din ang negosyo, especially ngayong new normal. So yun. Dr. Irwin, ano yun eh? may, may tanong dito. Uh, for example, may program ba ang Dobinant CZ na, uh, kunyari, ako husband, I'm in Singapore, and I'd like my wife to start the, the uh, ano ito? Uh, backyard racing ng free-range chicken. May program po ba kayo na ganun? 
Yes, uh, we have uh, uh, guys from from Singapore who who are, who, who uh, convince their 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 wives no? to uh, go through the modules that we 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 uh, recommend. So these modules are teaching modules. These are learning since 1992. So these things are very important wisdom and knowledge that you can use ibaon mo yan when you go forward. So you while you're working out, out, out there in Singapore, you have your your uh, your wife, your your nanay, your son, your daughters go through the module so they understand the whole picture and and, and situation, not just the ABC. ABC is secondary. It's more of learning the whole picture. Once they see the whole picture, they can do the program and start it up. Once they see more more opportunities, they our, our Kababayans abroad can fund it more slowly but surely. Because remember, this is food. And uh, chicken is one of the main preference right now here in the Philippines. So you can let your wife, your loved ones to do the learning first. And this learning can be done by even the our Kababayans abroad because it is also through a Facebook system. So you have seven days on, you can rewind, review the program, paulit ulit, repeat, repeat, for seven days you have that access. So you can learn well. And then from that, at that we have a live question and answer and then we will have uh, certificates given out. So per ano, we want the identity of the Filipino to come out from this program because they say it's just a simple chicken, but for me, this is one of the identities that we have to use as a tool towards being uh, proud Filipinos uh, uh, in the uh, around the world. No, yun po. Thank you po. Yeah, mag maganda yata, Doc Irwin, kasi and dami talagang interested to uh, uh, get your program. Could you kindly flash again your uh, Facebook page? I think marami <laughs> gusto talagang uh, pumasok. They're asking, how do I join? Uh, how do I start the program? How do I get in touch, Doc? Yan. Sige, ito you, maybe you could... <laughs> uh, ito po, ano? I will share it. Okay. One thing is that I, I hope that our uh, our board in, in, in Singapore with the Bayanian Society can uh, look into this program because this can help. And it can pass through the board, uh, the, the society, as a way to for create funds no at the same time uh, we we help so that's a very unusual right now you're earning while you're helping so this is one opportunity so you can get in touch with us at dominant asia pacific uh, to our facebook page of dominant asia pacific and and you like our page first and then you can inquire okay but uh, later on i hope that the bayanian uh, society can look into the program so that we can help more Kababayans in, 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 in abroad, not just in Singapore, but uh, uh, the whole world. No? <clears throat> so dominant Asia Pacific. Po. I, I think Doc Maganda, let's leave the slide first, okay? Because I'm sure you know. Uh, Doc, your number, po ba dyan? Is that yours? Zero nine zero five. Yes. Okay, uh, good. <laughs> yes, but uh, yeah. the Facebook, the Facebook is more. Uh, Right now, it's more engaging right now. Well, the, I, I agree, I agree. All the templates, everything, even illustrations and pictures. And so, it's much cheaper kasi ano. Yeah. Uh, messenger. Doc, may tanong dito, which I think is a very good question. Uh, vaccination ng mga ano, free-range chicken. What would be the program? Para maiwasan yung ano. We, we still do the standard vaccination program like day 7, ND, B1, B1, plus... Uh, uh, IB and then okay. kaya lang lighter than the commercial uh, chicken racing. The okay. uh, 21 is ND Lasota plus IB and then uh, we teach you by security. That's the only thing. You have to learn how to be clean with your farming. Once you, you buy you secure your area, you have less chances of getting uh, diseases going around. In the farm. That's exactly. But, that's Yes, but right. endemic lang kasi ang uh, Newcastle, this Newcastle. Is, we need to vaccinate on against Newcastle. Yeah. Basic Thank you, <laughs> And then we do probiotics. We we encourage probiotics. We encourage you to ferment. We encourage you because the taste of the produce is really different. A three-day-old egg is very different from what you buy from the stores. 
So that's the thing that you look for when you go back to the provinces. It's really the mm. freshness of the poultry produce. Yan po. Doc, may question ako ah. Uh, in yeah. terms of price, uh, uh, what would be the price of a native manok compared to a broiler manok? Okay. Ang presyo po natin ngayon ng manok is very expensive ngayon dito. Dressed chicken here is around 180 pesos per kilo right now. So because of the high demand, no, issues of supply and demand and, and, and ASF. In, in, in our free-range community, we, we sell at a standard regardless whether the demand on white chicken is high or low. Our selling price for live, we sell live only right now because there are a national meat inspection requirements if you dress. But if you are going to sell it live, it's 210 to 220 live for 1.5 kilo. So you'll be earning uh, uh, 1.5 times 220, 330 ang isang piraso ng live chicken. Wow. So, ang cost to produce me is around 170, 150 to 170. So, maganda ang profit ng farmer. The, 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 the practice here is to have a small volume, good quality, but a high, high, high profit margin. Kasi we cannot uh, fight it out with big companies, with big fundings. In the egg, egg uh, production naman sa layer type, ang cost to produce me is around 6 pesos. The farmers here are selling at around 10 pesos. 10 pesos per egg. Farm gate, 9 pesos. So you're earning 3 pesos. Imagine if you have 500 eggs a day. A day. You have a net production, a uh, net profit of 1,500 pesos a day. So you don't have to sell it in the stores. You just do your social media selling, farm to home programs. Uh, every Tuesday, I will be in this village who are the ones interested. So we are also uh, going with the flow of uh, new normal with the online selling, etc. And it's fresh. You can guarantee really that it is fresh. So we want to just embrace a system that is capable of running in your locality. Kasi ang nakikita ko po sa iba, uh, they let uh, us dream so far and so long and so big, so high, na sometimes the reality or the basics are forgotten. So we need to start first on the basics. Pakainin natin families natin. We get the business in the locality, our kamag-anaks, our churches, our groups. Then we're happy with the markets. It's a sideline in the first place. no? And then you evolve it from there. Ganun po yung okay. aming idea. Mm. Well, Dr. Erwin, ganito po. Ah. Um, I'd like to start na. Okay? Uh, number one, ano yung mga requirements? And then I have 20,000 pesos right now. Okay. Um, where will that uh, ano tawag niya? Thank you. Saan ako madadala ng 20,000 ko? What are your requirements? Tama ba mamini? <laughs> okay. So 20,000 pesos you 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 do the the uh, introduction on uh, free range production no? and then uh, from there you learn the system and then you will set an order. You have to tell where your area is. For example, if you're from Ilocos, there are certified farmers there whom mm. you, we will uh, connect you to. Mm -hmm. so, but however, ikaw pa rin mag-check, validate ng mga yan. And then okay. you can start there. You can buy 100 heads. And then uh, start it out. Try the learning curve. Kung baga sa bicycle, kailangan sumemp lang muna, kalahati mm -hmm. lang na ano. Pero balik pa rin ang puhunan mo doon. So okay. then you will roll from there. So if you want to go to elevate it more to a higher profitable business, mm -hmm. go to uh, breeding stations. I because agree. a breeding station is the one that supplies the chicks in your locality. Correct. So fully Correct. booked. Uh, right, right now, our farming, our my personal our, our breeder farm is fully booked until June. Imagine Totoo. having a business of being fully booked until June. You just worry about your production. You don't mm. worry about who will buy tomorrow or later mm. or if it rains, nobody buys. No. Mm. So this thing is fully booked, already prepaid. Imagine. So the, the beauty or all the things that you can get on a small business setup or module is, is, is similar to this kind of program are the things that we want for a business. So okay. that's how you go through the 20,000. So the 20,000 will earn you about 8,000 muna. Balik puhunan yun. Babalik puhunan mo, may kita ka. So another role ka na naman. Then hmm. later you will locate 
uh, customers who would like to buy small restaurants who will buy from you, uh, native ihaw ihaw stores, no, or even health conscious people, or even uh, people with the, who are sick with cancer, no, who are sick with uh, with diseases or uh, kidney problems. These are the things that uh, you can rest assured the consumer that this is clean chicken or clean mm. eggs. So yun ang value adding niya. Nice. Ay, ito naman, Dr. Erwin, may tanong. Uh, kasi we talked about a lot about uh, the meat type na free-range chicken. What if I want to go into ano naman, uh, pangingitlog, layer okay. naman po? Yeah. Okay. So when you start with the layer, uh, you go to the same program, the module, no? Then you start with 100 heads. The 100 heads of day old, uh, it will start producing eggs at around four months old. The four months. Maga. So it may cycle you have to wait for mm. that. But once it 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 uh, initiates, eb, load ka every three months of uh, new young chicks so that you will have a regular target supply. So mm. dito, medyo maganda ang mas malakikita, but you really need to work out for that. For example, you need about uh, 500,000 as a, as a puhunan. Okay. But you can earn around uh, siguro, lagay mo ng 800,000, 300,000 ang kita for one year. So that is only on a small volume of 300 heads. Correct. So it goes as you grow and uh, you just uh, tap the markets in the area muna. Kasi mahirap magbigay ng straight line definition of earning, hmm. etc. And I don't want to promise you the heaven and the earth and the stars. Correct, correct. I just want to be realistic because hmm. this is livestock. So once you get the the thing going, you just get orders as you go. So a five and half a million will earn you three hundred thousand. Yeah, parang ganyan ng takbuhan yan. in one year time. So if you have two flocks running, uh, side by side, no, nagsasagot ng production. So in a hmm. year's time, you'll be earning around six hundred thousand. So Dr. Win, yung sa yung sa five hundred thousand yan, does that include the housing na? housing amortization so you can amortize it in about four grows and then the feeds and then the genetics utilities and miscellaneous so, ah, so complete setup na siya complete setup na yun wow okay yun okay yun so, actually what, ngayon that, uh, alam hmm. nyo doc uh, nagiging ano na siya yung nakre-recognize na ng mga rural bank tsaka hmm. ano for me that is already a, an achievement Kasi dati mm. pinagtatawanan lang yung native na yan. Eh. Ngayon, nagiging portfolio na sa loan. Mm. Because the DA is also looking at it as an opportunity to recover from this mm. uh, new normal. Okay. So we have rural banks who are really starting it out to loan out oh, funds. Okay. Yeah. Mamini, paging PNB, no? Tama ba? <laughs> yes. Tulungan natin ng mga kababayan natin. Oh, just <laughs> Pero why not? Kasi si uh, Ma'am Christy is ano eh, looking into helping our kababayans. Uh, yeah, maybe it would be a nice program. Half a million is actually a good start na, Dr. Erwin. Kasi yes. Yeah. Na. Yeah. So, you eh, can uh, side by side. Of, opo, in terms do. of land area, uh, ano yung requirement nyo naman? How, how much land do I need to have that 300 birds? And then yun. Uh, by security and all that stuff, yun po. Uh, uh, how much land do I need po? 500 square meters. 500 square meters is good enough. 500 yeah. square. Siyempre, the bigger, the better. But, uh, you know, uh, depende rin sa ranging area if the the, the forage is thick. You have at, I have farmers in Pangasinan, you know, they have already about uh, 800 square meters to 1,000 square. But their business is booming because they're producing around, uh, let's say, 800 eggs a day. So, okay. an, an laki ng opportunity. Eh, Na-i-roll niya na yung business niya na he doesn't need to go out of their houses or their farms because the, the customers go to you already. They even, you know, uh, nagtatampo pa minsan sa'yo if you cannot give them eggs. You know? I, I vouch for that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, please. Yeah. May isa dito. When, when we said your, your initial investment of half a million for mm -hmm. a laying uh, free-range chicken, hindi, hindi ready to lay po yun, ano? The OC Ay, siya. I, I start the program from the start because the, the earnings, yung mga partake ng earnings ng mga uh, traders in between ready to lay, 
Ay, mawawala yun, mapupunta yung savings sa'yo nun eh because you start ah, from the start, di ba? Because tama. me, th- there are farmers like the guys in Pangasinan, in Sambales, they do ready to lace also with free range. They earn around 150 pesos per head, per chicken. Yeah, yeah. So once they sell a thousand for two months time or three months time, ready to lay, good quality, pinag-aagawan, na. Yeah. 150,000 pesos yun. So, ang laki. There are multiple ways of earning. Like, for example, you you get to 300 heads of players and 100 heads of uh, inasal meat type. So, yung inasal type nyo, you sell, you only grow it for 70 to 80 days. So, 70 days, cash in ka na dyan. So, you can roll the money. Mm-hmm. So, before the the first batch of players lay at the four to four and a half months, mm-hmm. you're on your second cycle of meat, inasal meat mm-hmm. type. So, you have ways of earning Uh, multiple options so that you have monetized the chicken itself. So you can get, instead of 300 heads, you get 500 heads. So the 500 heads, you grow them together. The, once the time of ready to lay age is three months mm-hmm. or three and a half months, you sell the 200. Balik na kagad ang puunan mo doon. So yun yung opportunity. The demand is very high. right? I, I can really, you know, uh, I can assure you that the Once you follow the system, uh, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. It is already mm-hmm. here. You just the system is working already. The system is working. And I'm surprised myself how it got to this level already. Because yeah, yeah. Uh, what I saw way back in 1994 or 93 in, in, in Europe, because in Europe, only 30% is white chicken. 70% is colored chicken, organic, bio. They call it free range. No, They go biodynamic chicken farming. So ito, developed na sila. Tayo, papunta pa lang doon. So slowly the tide is turning towards local farmers. Mm-hmm. Not company-based big companies. It is a local mm-hmm. farming industry. I agree. And Mamini, do you have any questions po? Uh <laughs> <laughs> Sorry na dominate ko maminsan. <laughs> well, I think uh ayun, I think nasagot na and I'm sure marami pa silang questions. We have uh Dr. Irwin's uh, profile and also Dominant Asia Livestock. I'm sure they'd like to engage uh, Dr. Irwin. So with that, um I'd like to thank Dr. Irwin for a very insightful presentation. Thank you so much for helping us. I'd pass the ball na to uh, Mamini. Mamini, thank you so much for this opportunity. Bo. Yeah, hi, Attorney Ranveer. It's nice to see you all. <laughs> hi, hi. Yes, I'm back. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Erwin Joseph Cruz and Dr. Bernard Basic. Uh, we learned so much, although yung iba, it goes over my head kasi medyo may pagka-technical na hindi ako sanay. But I'm sure people who are watching us, listening, I think they have an idea of what you're talking about. But I can only remember we need at least 20,000 pesos minimum. And this have the dock, uh, 500 square meters down for land. So the bigger and the more, the better. And mga three months and a half before we can see the eggs uh, from the chicken. Those are the some details that I can remember. But I think a lot of our Kababayans are really keen to have this business back at home. Um, well, it's, you know, it's a kind of um, backup Uh, in addition to your full-time jobs, wherever you are, we do have a lot of viewers from different provinces in the Philippines, from the north to the south. So that's amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. And before we uh, proceed, may I? we have our PBSS honorary president with us. May I call on Attorney Ranveer Kumar, who, might, uh, who will be saying some few words. Attorney Ranveer, please. Uh, thank you very much, Mini. Uh, Doc Bernard, it's very nice to see you. Doc Bernard is an old friend of ours and very and a good supporter of Mining Hand Society. Thank you very much for kindly uh, agreeing to moderate this uh, event this evening. And thank you, Dr. Erwin Joseph S. Cruz. Um, although I joined the presentation quite late, but to the t- tail end, and I heard throughout the entire question and answer session, I think the Your presentation was very interesting, a very, very topical, interesting subject. And I think I'm sure our listeners would have learned a lot from the program that you have. And what an interesting program that you have developed 
you know, to allow people to, you know, invest into this uh, red uh, free ranging chicken in, Phil in Philippines, what we in this region would call the kampong chicken. Kampong. You know, yeah. and kampong chicken is always kampong. the favorite really, first choice. Really yeah. Right? First yeah. choice. Yeah. First right. choice, always. So yeah. I'm glad that you have developed this program, which I think will give a lot of opportunities for. Filipinos and others who are based in Singapore to invest in those kind of farms. And as you said, that goes towards a very topical subject now, which is food security. And so on Bainihan's part, uh, the Bainihan Society's part, we play this role of trying to put, you know, interesting topics together for our audience to uh, be able to learn new stuff, new things, and form a bridge between people like your organization and our community here in Singapore. So I, this is part and parcel of what we do. And this is, this series is a by any hand talk series where, you know, you're involved. We also have the other uh, series of events at the Bainihan Society, which we have started a new one called the Bainihan Kultura series, you know, so that's topics on cultural matters are handled under the Kultura series. Uh, what is interesting when I, I need to mentioned a little, perhaps many we have mentioned earlier, is we are also uh, having our annual Bainihan walk, which is going to be held sometime in March. Now, the interesting thing is, this is going to be held virtually, since we are still under COVID-19 pandemic situation. And certainly, Dr. Irwin and your friends in Philippines, you're welcome to join us because you can be walking wherever you are. You just have to, you know, be part of that walk. You can be walking from Philippines as well, and that'd be great for you to join. And we hope to get many people from overseas uh, in the Philippines and other countries joining us in this walk as well. That's one of the benefits of having it done virtually. So uh, with that brief little presentation uh, remarks, I would really like to thank you very much for you know uh, putting your time aside and speaking to our audience. And with that, I would like to pass over to Mini for her to continue with the program. Thank you. Thank you, Tony Ranveer. Um, yes, it, there's, it, this is a very good, interesting program. And I'm sure a lot of our people here and everywhere outside the Philippines as well, in the Philippines and outside the Philippines, are interested in this um, chicken farming. Um, before we end this, may I now call and invite Ms. Christy Vicentina, our PBSS Honorary Vice President. Christy, please. Mm. Uh, thank you, Mini. Nine o'clock. Nine. Uh, mm. Thank you, Mini. And good evening to our friends and kababayans in Singapore and to our family and friends back home in the Philippines, Mabuhay. Uh, on behalf of Philippine Bayanihan Society Singapore and on behalf of our president, Ranveer Kumar Singh, allow me to say thank you to the people who help us for tonight's webinar. Doc Bernard Basic, thank you for joining us tonight as co-moderator and welcome back uh, virtually in Singapore. And thank you for making the conversation livelier indeed uh, from the doctor himself. And of course, Dr. Erwin Joseph S. Cruz, our fellow UPLB graduate. And definitely you carry with you the UPLB spirit of generosity and care for others. Maraming salamat for sharing your expertise to our kababayan tonight. Generously sharing, if I may emphasize that. So, siguro nag, nagkasalubong tayo at one point sa UPLB, pero hindi pa tayo magkakilala noon. So, I'm really uh, honored and happy to meet you uh, virtually tonight. Sana po marami tayong natutunan that we can apply as we aspire for a more sustainable uh, livelihood back in the Philippines uh, to help ourselves and our respective families. Sabi nga ni Doc, pwedeng ano to, uh, sideline lang muna natin. We can start small and we can start yung kaya nating i-manage until we can grow it. So let's take a closer look for agri-farming as an alternative to our common uh, sari-sari store and tricycle. Um, it offers an opportunity to differentiate among our competitors 
or our kapitbahays. Sabi kanina ni Doc Bernard calling on uh, PNB. Yes, we have a program. We call it uh, Pangarap Loan. So you can uh, look for us and uh, we will be happy to uh, help you uh, put this together. Uh, just uh, ask ourselves siguro, parang it's a simple question of sino sa atin ang kumakain ng manok or kumakain ng chicken? Raise ang hand ng kumakain ng chicken. So kapag no, nag-raise no, no, no. kayo ng hand, kung nag-raise kayo ng hand, ibig sabihin, potential customer tayong lahat. Promise during the pandemic, tinola lang po ang baon ko araw-araw for six months. So mabubuhay naman tayo sa manok. Buhay na buhay pala tayo sa manok. So again, you may check their uh, Facebook page. It's Dominant Asia Pacific for uh, more ano po, more uh, information. Maraming salamat din to all our uh, friends who always help us share and promote our webinars. Of course, the Philippine Embassy Singapore led by His Excellency Ambassador Yap, uh, Richard and Rex of FLPH, Lean of CDE. Lean, maraming salamat for all the sharing that uh, you did. Puno po yung uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom uh, area natin. Okay, we have more than 120 participants in Zoom. Maraming maraming salamat. And Faust, um, Faust uh, group dance, STP group dance. Millet of Fast, uh, Miss Clemens of Overseas Skills Program and Services, BNG, uh, Rita J, Lucky Plus Ladies, uh, FAS, uh, Mao and Luz, I saw you again, UAP, Ateneo LSE, UPAS, uh, Jeng, their president is here, uh, Excalibur, Kabayanihan, uh, Jehan and Arvin, maraming salamat ulit. And syempre, maraming salamat to all our participants in Zoom and our Facebook uh, viewers. Please don't forget to like us or like our page. Uh, just to mention, sa so sobrang dami po nang nanonood sa atin, I pick up your names, Miss Melita Hizol from Italy, Jocelyn Balaba, Singapore, Adol Cebu, Kyle, North Cotabato, Mang Bert, uh, Nabua, from Nabua, uh, Justin Aquino from Manila, Maestrado from California, Roland from Cagayan, Joel from Abra, Emily from Surigao del Sur, Altair, I hope I said your name, from Aurora Province. Melvin from Saudi Arabia. Mary Ann, uh, she's my sister from Pampanga. Stingray from Davao. Sharon from Davao del Norte. Estong from Bohol, from Samar, si Alex. And Brian from uh, Lanao del Norte. And marami pa pong iba. Uh, yung mga iba, baka nauna silang dumaan. Baka lumingon ako sa kabila, hindi ko kayo nakita. So yung mga hindi ko po nakita, uh, join ko kayo ulit next time and I will try to look for your name again. Maraming maraming salamat. This just shows na sobrang dami and uh, sobrang... Um, Marami tayong participants from all over the globe and all over the Philippines. So please don't forget to like our button or to like our button uh, for uh, Philippine Bayanihan Society. Again, good evening and mabuhay. Back to you, Mini. Thank you, Christy. If, for those who do not know, Christy is also the general manager of the Philippine National Bank here in Singapore and she's in charge of the region. So. She is the right person to be here to answer on behalf of PNB. Yes, that's good. So thank you so much for joining us. Philippine Bayanihan Center of PBSS is at the Bayanihan Center, 43 Pasir Panjang Road. Uh, please like our Facebook. Pasensya na po kung makulit. Facebook.com.bayanihansocietysg. Tapos, please join us or follow us on Instagram by, at Bayanihan Society SG and support us at www.giving.sg slash PBSS. Thank you all very much for joining us today, our 15th webinar already under our Bayanihan Talk webinar series. We hope this has been a fruitful discussion and presentation for each one of you. I know I learned a lot. So uh, I hope you can join us again. Uh, the next Bainihan seminar is on Thursday. It's a Thursday, February 4, 2021. And the topics will be OFW benefits from SSS and PAGEBIC. So 
I hope we hope you can join us. The guest speakers are Ms. Lucille Blesilda L. Simbo of SSS and Mr. Christian John T. Oliveros of Pagibi, representatives here in Singapore. So on behalf of the Philippine Bayanihan Society Singapore, and together with all the board and the staff of the society, we say thank you for joining us tonight and see you at the next webinar. Keep well, keep safe, good night, and God bless. Bye.